Hey there, Master Apologists. The Catholic Resource Center has finally launched their online catalog. With an ever-expanding library of Catholic presentations, you'll never have to turn on the television again. The truth never goes out of style, which is why they work so hard on preserving the talks that date as far back as the 1980s. Simply go to catholicrc.org and download any talk available. We hope you'd consider making a donation so that they can keep up the great work, or become a monthly donor to Virgin Most Powerful Radio and receive access to the entire catalog for free. Go to catholicrc.org and start evangelizing everyone you know. This morning, I wanted to talk, isn't this an uplifting thing? I thought the first talk of the day is gonna be on depression. <laughs> that, isn't that great? That should, that should tell you where we're headed, right? The, uh, let's start here. And again, I have a master's degree in psychology from NYU, all right? I'm not a doctor in psychology. Keep that in mind. I hope to have a doctorate one day in common sense, but I think that's going to happen three hours after I die. Depression is an incredible phenomenon, and we're going to see how St. Joseph comes into this, because you're saying, what in the world would this have to do with St. Joseph? I think it does. Depression is a phenomenon that's, that's grown more and more and more and more. You've probably noticed that. You, either you have suffered from depression, or you have friends who have suffered from depression, or relatives, and you've certainly heard enough about it. What is it? It's often confused with sadness. We all know what sadness is. If you've been alive for over two or three days, you know what sadness is. You, you, you get it. But it's not sadness. It's not sadness. Sadness has a reason for its existence, for being. For example, I'm sad because uh, my mother died. I'm sad because I lost that opportunity to be a millionaire. I'm sad because I failed a test in school. I'm sad because, because, because. We have all sorts of reasons. I'm sad because my boyfriend doesn't love me anymore. <laughs> Sadness has a reason. You can pinpoint the reason why you're sad. You know why you're sad. Depression doesn't. This is, this is the difference. But actually, depression does, okay? <laughs> but there's a difference, there's a big difference. Sadness you can see readily, you understand it. And depression, you don't know why you're in this state of depression. You don't know why. And people tell you silly things like, oh, get over it. Oh, cheer up. <laughs> Look on the bright side. You know, we used to call that Pollyanna thinking. Right? It's just lovely, just, just think good thoughts. Well, there's more to it than that, and you know it. We've got two things going on with depression. A chemical problem, a little bit, and an emotional problem. We get back to, do you know the, you know the old argument of, of, of nurture and nature, right? Back and forth, whether it's the environment or is it your, your, your genes? I used to say, when we had, we had the, I had an orphanage in Mexico for 14 years, and all of these kids were, there were over 500 kids who were fantastic. They were fantastic, and they were great years. And I used to pride myself on this. I said, if they turn out all right, it was because of my influence. <laughs> if they don't, it's genetic. <laughs> well, I'm joking, you understand. But that's really the way we look at a lot of things, right? It's that. Depression also has a deeper reason. There's a reason for depression. And often these reasons are trauma. They're trauma. They're traumatic things that have happened to us. You know all of the, all of the, the trauma that can happen to you, right, from childhood on. And many times these things are buried. They're, they're there, but they're not up to the surface. They require, they require therapy. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Um, let me just make a little caveat. When I'm saying that something requires therapy, 
I mean, you better go to somebody who you can trust and somebody who has a moral compass. Otherwise, you're in trouble. If you hand your soul, this, the psyche, psyche, psychological, psycho, psychology, psychiatry, psyche, in Greek means soul. Psychology is the study of the soul. Huh? The study of the soul. If you hand your soul over to just anybody, be careful. Be careful. This is what I'm telling a lot of parents right now about the school system. You're turning your children's souls over to these people. Be careful. And you know what's happening. I think you know what's happening. Rather than education, they're getting indoctrination. It's, it's that simple. And this is happening on a, on a wide scale. Here's something that's really incredible. One out of 10 Americans suffers from depression. We hold the record for this. Now that should give you a clue as to where I'm going. We hold the record for depression worldwide. There's no country like the United States as far as depression. Well, that's kind of an indication, that's a hint where we should start looking for a problem. There are civilizations in the world that have never heard of the United States of America, have never heard of Western civilization, have no idea. And they've been studied for depression. Can you imagine this? One out of 1,000 feels off. <laughs> kind of a bad day, right? One out of 1,000. And here it's one out of 10. Not only is that alarming, but it's growing. It's growing. That's this generation. We have an upcoming generation in which there's going to be more trouble than that. They're looking for 25% of the, of the upcoming generation is going to suffer from depression. When I'm saying depression, I mean clinical depression. I'm not talking about having a bad day. That's sadness. If you, we all, we all have sadness. This is, a, this, is, this is, as a matter of fact, if you don't have sadness, you can't enjoy happiness. There's a reason for everything, isn't there? There just is. You're made by a, a fantastic designer, the most fantastic in the entire universe. He made you in a fantastic way. And you're to experience a lot of things in life so that you can learn from them, improve, and ultimately be happy. Why is this happening in the United States and in Western civilization more than it's happening anywhere else in the world? A lot of reasons, a lot of reasons. Um, I know I'm going to get criticized for this. One of the major reasons, I think, is it's called sloth, laziness. I have never seen so many people with nothing to do. Young people who should be out, energetic, who should be conquering the world, are sitting in their basements playing video games. How many hours a day we're, on, we're doing this? Where, where these people get thumb dexterity, I, I don't know. It's amazing. I, I, I watch in amazement. What are they doing in all of this? They're comparing themselves to other people. Social media, what is social media? It's comparing yourself to other people. And you know who's going to be the loser? You! You're going to lose. You're always going to be on the bottom most rung when you're comparing yourself to people who are portraying themselves much better than they are. You're in the bottom rung of that. And of course, 
you're going to be depressed. Look at the look at the augment in plastic surgery. Just in plastic surgery, I have to have a nose like this one. I have to have pecs like uh, Brad Pitt, huh? and I have to look like. Uh, Look how I'm dating myself. I was almost going to see and say, and I have to have a figure like Gina Lola Brigida. Most of you don't even know who Gina Lola Brigida was. That's how old I am. It's, and, and they go through plastic surgery to become these people. Because what I am and how I am and who I am is not good enough. We all know that. Well, you wonder why you're going to be depressed? Comparing, 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 comparing. And then people will tell you also on, on social media, and when I'm talking about social media, I'm talking about what is overcome. This is, this is massive. You know this. The suicide rate in the United States of America is, is insane because of this. Not because of social media per se, I'm all in favor of communication. This is fantastic. I think it's fantastic that I've, I've got kids now who are in their 50s. I can't believe I'm saying this. Yeah. In their 50s. From, from, uh, from when I, I, I took them in when they were eight years old, they're now 50. Makes you feel old. But they can communicate from me from anywhere in the world. Imagine. I got a telephone call from one of my kids in South Africa. Another one in Canada, another one here. Yeah, it's fantastic. That's wonderful. Don't get me wrong, that's marvelous. Communication is marvelous. You know why it's wonderful? Because our Lord said he wanted the gospel preached to the entire world. Well, you know what? Today is the first time, I think, in human history where that can be done. That can actually be done. That's not, a, that's not a, an ideal that's unreachable. It can actually be done. So these are marvelous times. But with marvelous times come also terrible temptations and problems. And you have to, take, you have to look at everything and decide what's good, take that, and what's bad, reject it. We've taken what's bad and accepted it. We say, what's bad is good. Everybody's opinion. Can you imagine building your life around how many likes you get? I'm serious. How many likes you get? That, that, that's important to you? My goodness. I mean, hang it up. Just hang it up. When, when your life de depends on what the majority dictate, and the majority have no taste, and the majority are not going anywhere. And as a matter of fact, there are some who would tell you the majority are going to hell. That's what you want to follow. That's going to be your guideline? I don't think so. I don't think so. Here you have one who's, I'm telling you, the majority think hair is beautiful. <laughs> I should hang it up already. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter, the majority, that's ridiculous. Don't look to the majority. Don't look to the majority. I'm going to tell you something, too. I've got a, a group here of Catholics. You're looking to the majority, you're in the wrong religion. Boy, are you in the wrong place. Are you in the wrong place if you're looking for majority comfort? Because you're not going to find it here. Christ promises you the contrary. He promised you, can you imagine, IBM or any company like this recruiting and telling you, if you join our, our company, young man or young woman, we promise you persecution, jail time, and death. <laughs> you want to sign here? <laughs> this is what Christ promises you. He said, I promise you all of the troubles in the world. You're going to have all the troubles in the world. But after that, you're going to have a heaven and an existence like you cannot imagine. Words don't come close to describing it. You choose. Why do we have all of these problems? Because to a great degree, this is not the total thing, we have too much leisure time. We just have too much free time to do nothing. Where does St. Joseph come into all of this? 
St. Joseph comes in because one of his titles is St. Joseph the Worker. The Worker. Work is a marvelous thing. We were made for work. That's part of who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be achieving, contributing, doing. Be very careful if you don't because then you become like me, too fat. <laughs> we'll get into, there's a, let me just make it a little bit of parenthesis here too. Another thing that we're supposed to be doing is exercising. Exercising this, also exercising this. And I'm the first one to say, to make a mea culpa. Right? I, I don't know how many times people have said to me, as a matter of fact, this man said it just the other day, he said, he thinks he's subtle. He thinks he's subtle. He's not. He said, you know, I found walking to be very good. <laughs> I said, do you? <laughs> yeah. Just walking, walking. And I know this is the, I know this is the key to, to my 60 extra pounds. I know it is to getting rid of them. I don't make time for it, and I'm the first one to tell you that, but I know. How many, time, how many of you people think that exercise is bad for you? Nobody. How many have been told over and over and over again, you know you should exercise? And we don't. Well, let's start. Why is that good? Why is that good? I'm talking, when I'm talking exercise, I'm not talking about on a treadmill. I'm not talking about joining a gym. That's, as a matter of fact, I'm against it. I'm against it. I think that's ridiculous. That's not the way God built us. He didn't make us to be on a treadmill for three hours a day. That's not it. Work is good. Physical work. Also walking. God gave you two legs. Why did he give you those two legs? Walk. Walk. Scientists tell us if you walk briskly, they put in an adjective there, briskly, you yeah. Uh, I heard a, a, a psychologist talking about, he defined briskly as this, uh, you're late for a plane and you're at the airport. That's brisk, right? You're late for an appointment and you've got to get there. That's brisk. Half an hour every other day. Imagine that. And he went on to say this, that becomes medicine. That becomes medicine. We're looking, give me a pill. Oh, if, I, if they just, pretty soon they're going to invent a pill. They're going to create a pill that does this, that. You don't need a pill. Exercise. But now let's get down to something even more basic. And this is really at the heart of everything. Your world view. And this is, this is, our Western world view, right? Here's where we're coming. This is why we've got a higher suicide rate and a higher depression rate. And a high... There's something wrong with the way we're viewing the world and hence our place in the world. Do you find it surprising if I tell you that according to that depression rate and suicide rate, because depression can lead to suicide and does, I've had cases. They're sad, but it goes to such a degree that it ends up in suicide. This is part of Western civilization. Do you find it a corollary, an interesting corollary, that also the greatest, the greatest number of atheists and agnostics belong to Western civilization? Huh? Isn't that curious how that works? Their worldview is off. And our worldview can really be off easily. Let's start this way. Number one is God. If we've got that in our mind, you're on the right track. If you don't, I don't know where you're going. Good luck to you. God. Trinity. This afternoon we're going to talk about we're going to talk about uh, part of that, that trinity, that trinitarian mystery of love. 
but God, who is Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The creation of the world, the creation of man. Here's how important you are in this whole spectrum. You are so important that God overlooked a revolt of angels to get to you. God overlooked a revolution of angels. Of the fight between St. Michael and Lucifer was over one thing. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, will, the will. Okay? The, the devil, all of the angels were given a choice, yes or no, one time, one time. This is a one chance deal. Do you ever have an offer like that? I'm gonna make you a deal one time. You walk away from this deal, that's it. Don't come back. One time. Will you serve or will you not? Will you stay and love me or will you not? One chance. St. Michael said yes, Lucifer said no, I will not serve. Done. This is called the will. They were given one chance at will. You and I have a will 24 hours a day, and we're given multiple chances to use that will. This is the greatest gift after life that God has given you, is your will. And it plays into love, which we're gonna see this afternoon. The will, the will. Let me just back up to Thomas Aquinas says something I think is really neat. He says, what was that fight over? What did Lucifer get upset about to begin with? What upset him? What is this? What's at the heart of it? And Aquinas says, at the heart of it was God's intention to create man, to create another being. Human beings didn't exist. To create man, and when I say man, let's, please let's get over it. I'm talking women too. Do you, do you understand this? I, I, I've never seen it. Woman. Got it? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I was educated in a different world, believe me, with, with, with some standards of education, and, and I don't like the right red circles around the essay papers. I can still remember in fourth and fifth grade for getting things wrong. When God created man, he gave the angels a glimpse of what he was going to do for man. A glimpse. And Lucifer according to Aquinas, and it's based on pretty good reason, became insanely envious. How dare man be more loved by God than us angels? How dare? How dare God love the man more than, and man that doesn't even exist yet. How dare God have an intention? How dare God ultimately send his only son to redeem man. How dare he love man more than me? How dare? How dare God? This was the revolt. And why I'm telling you this is for you to understand how precious you are to God. Each one of you. Me too. Each one of us is absolutely precious to God. The world tells you the contrary. You're nothing. You're nothing. You don't have enough likes. You need more likes. Then you'll be something. No. The fact that you are is marvelous to God. If you do not have God in your life, you're missing it. You're, you're, you're the, I don't know where you're going. I'm serious. I don't know where you're going. Hey there, Master Apologist. 
the Catholic Resource Center has finally launched their online catalog. With an ever-expanding library of Catholic presentations, you'll never have to turn on the television again. The truth never goes out of style, which is why they work so hard on preserving the talks that date as far back as the 1980s. Simply go to catholicrc.org and download any talk available. We hope you'd consider making a donation so that they can keep up the great work or become a monthly donor to Virgin Most Powerful Radio and receive access to the entire catalog for free. Go to catholicrc.org and start evangelizing everyone you know.